that can lead us to the uh, next theme, uh, which I would like to also discuss with you. Um, you said uh, that, that uh, uh, giving art uh, also with the other groups, uh, through education, through some also experience, some uh, personal experience, uh, what, uh, what do you think about um, um, galleries as a specific place uh, for uh, some exhibition of artworks uh, uh, and thinking about galleries as some public space? Or um, how can we think today galleries as a public space still? From also personal ex um, experiences and uh, also as you see it um, and you think about. I think it's how how public, how much public it is public, but how much you know, when it started, so and where it ends or something like this. I would say and. Uh, I mean, there are so many uh, public spaces that can be uh, not looking like public, but in the end they are public in a moment that you say something loud and somebody hears you, you know, or you show something which uh, it's about exhibiting, it's about that it's open to people, it's open mm -hmm. to anybody. So it's like it's a moment that it goes out of my studio or the place of production, for me it's already anywhere can be public, you know. Mm -hmm. it's but what public. about a gallery as a specific place? Uh, when I say can they still function as a, some public space, I think uh, not only that all can come here, but also uh, some... Um, um, no, you I can think it. about the English word uh, uh, implication. Uh, the things that uh, produce also galleries can be still a public uh, public space. Is some place uh, where uh, all differences, different opinions, uh, can uh, come together, can uh, argue, can discuss, uh, can fight, and all that things. And thinking about galleries today. Um, as uh, such a public space uh, with those qualities. Uh, like not only being publicly situated, but also constituting a public space. Area. Yeah. And in that point, I'm thinking, uh, I'm questioning also, re questioning galleries as a public space. Do you want to continue? Oh, no, I was Um Yeah, I have to say that's been a question for me. Um, I've personally taken it from case to case <laughs> and seen what I can do. Um, and I think I'm always a little bit surprised. Maybe I can be boring and just say they're also in a process of transformation. And let's see what happens. I don't know. I mean, maybe we can try to reclaim them, but it's... I think, for myself at least, uh, I dance between the idea of... Uh, Thinking that art can be political, critical, emancipatory, and all of that, and has kind of a, a home in the gallery, but at the same time, the gallery is traditionally, and also today, somehow a space for the private art markets and for framing art and discourse if it happens within a tradition of a white cube that hasn't always supported uh, a lot of these debates or a lot of this public transformation, so I don't know, I'm not extremely uh, optimistic. I do enjoy possibilities to to slightly less conventional mm -hmm. projects or interventions, but yeah, sure, I mean, as you were saying before, it's wherever you claim the space and try to make a, a public, it's your space, and that's a very political action, but yeah. Yeah, it's always a level how, how much where mm -hmm. it starts and how much you can use it, you know, exactly. and the situation as well, yeah. you know, which could be illegal intervention or could be, you know, legal intervention. Mm -hmm. It depends from the context, the space, and there's so many other apparatus of this, you know, that create the, the power, you know, influence and that you have to, to, to kind of give it, you know. Public. 
It's just funny with galleries because they're per se a part of the space, so it's funny when it comes to like illegal or illegal actions, like yeah, because then you yeah. end up fighting with people who are on your side, who are like, well, we want to show something that's critical, but then we can, you know, take responsibility for it, and I don't know, and it's just, it's funny once it goes into the, the gallery space, how actually it exposes these contradictions. Yeah, but that gives you another uh, idea, another sure. push for something else, some other reactions, you know, it's like a provocation that leads you to something else if you are enough critical to that kind of respond to the gallerist, you know. So, when I said for to kind of my gallerist that, oh, my work is not so sellable, he said, no, why do you say that? I don't think so. Your work can be really sellable. And I was like, okay, the gallery is saying to me this, you know. So it's a kind of situation that you are also surprised from their approach, from their attitude. You have different levels and how much they want to, to be active in the, and use their position, which they have in, in, in a relation to everything, starting from art market and more, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because also this uh, Living Archive, you both are, um, are as uh, you're uh, contributing as an artist here. I see the practice that uh, is doing uh, through Living Archive as uh, some uh, trying to make from the gallery to put some, uh, new, to make uh, the public space, all, with all that uh, uh, gatherings in the gallery, working uh, through in the gallery, is trying uh, to make uh, some practices um, uh, which are uh, more than just exhibition. Um, and um, I don't know, how do you to think about uh, I mean, this kind of uh, representing art works. I was, yeah, um, it's interesting that you use that example because on the one hand it is, I mean, I guess a museum, not really a gallery, but, but definitely a, a classical art space. But because it's happening parallel to this discursive event, it's broken. So it's not the clean kind of classical gallery exhibition that people who are in the art scene hear about and come into. So there's a different audience, maybe, and it's a little bit um, not defined exactly the way that it normally is. And so I think in that way it's, it's articulated a little bit differently altogether. So it's... Uh, this time... Uh, yeah, in this specific case. case. So I mean, yeah. I think if there was no parallel event, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be so easy, you know, to have a living archive where people in the street hopefully come in. Mm -hmm. Because they wouldn't think that this kind of um, uh, sculpture museum would, would be this mm -hmm. kind of space at all. Um, so in that sense, I mean, it's actually connected to some other kind of practice really makes sense and breaks this and, yeah, actually mm -hmm. redefines what it is, if it's a museum or a conference or a university or, it actually or has different functions, yeah, yeah, exactly, some kind of bathtub, gas station, you know, like whatever experimental space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also one thing uh, connected with Living Archive uh, is um, uh, that uh, uh, they are also, here we are all questioning that feminist art uh, and uh, uh, what do you think about um, um, through your practice also about, um, f about feminism, um, about uh, how open that uh, term is? Uh, about feminist art um, and uh, on which uh, uh, basis should uh, be built? For, for me, I, I tried always to kind of start from uh, very basic points, you know, and uh, then it's related to my personal uh, reactions on, towards the, the feminism and towards the position what I have in society and the art scene mm -hmm. and the question of digging a bit more deep into that uh, direction. So it's a, it's a kind of provocation that comes to me and I don't provoke, it's only that I react into mm -hmm. what is, uh, uh, it's kind of respond what I get to, to my surrounding and it's, it, it is very personal but uh, still personal can be very political. So it's kind of political practice, form of, uh, of, of, of um, expressing and reacting. 
and I keep uh, saying because quite often the 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 art scene to, uh, said to me, that, uh, "Okay, you are always provoking, you know." And I had really to try and convince them that I never really provoke you. I only react towards your provocations. And if you get that as a re uh, provocation, then you can react towards my my reaction. You know, so it can go on and on, and then maybe something can come out of it. You know, mm -hmm. so in in that direction, I, when I made the first work, which I kind of could define more as a feminist work, it was not that I did something to be feminist. You know, mm -hmm. it was not to that level. It was only I have to do it. It's an emergency that I have. It's, it's how I have to respond, you know, to the situation. And uh, it's also a way of seeing, uh, like a, a way to experience my historical conditions in which I am uh, kind of settled up. And uh, not only to reflect, you know, as for example, there's a, uh, this text of Boris Buda, uh, uh, The Other Side of the Future, and he said that uh, to be aware of your historical condition of your life means not only to reflect uh, critically, however, but uh, to be able to um, uh, influence it, to intervene on it. And then you can say that you made an experience of your conditions of your life. So I try to stick to this, you know, that I want to be present and then I have to react and I don't w w make only feminist wars uh, because it's not the only scene that I, 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 I'm surrounded or, you know, it, it's, it provokes me. So in that sense I was immediately asked from journalists and uh, people from the scene, is this a feminist war? And my response was, if this is how feminism looks like, then it is feminist war. And you know, and with this, I wanted to tell that I don't know where really it starts, or I don't know where it ends. But if this is what it looks like, then yes, yeah, so what? You know, so I, I'm not afraid to declare myself feminist, but I I'm also want to tell you that I didn't do for the sake of feminism. You know, for mm -hmm. so I kind of try to mostly position myself here. You know, mm -hmm. don't know if I'm mm -hmm. very clear. Um, just one uh, sub question. Uh, what do you think? Uh, maybe this is a provocative question. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> maybe it's reaction. No, no, uh, no, no, no. What, what, what do you think about um, feminism? Um, also, what we are all hearing um, during the conference, and um, do you think it's. Uh, um, um, okay, I want to put it in your mouth, but uh, what do you think about what it is, feminism? When you hear it, um, how do you look? Because as you told, uh, you you react on some things, and if people notice or uh, see it as feminist... Then it is feminist. feminist. Yeah. It's like that response, you know. It's very simple in that sense. I mean, we all know how, how many problems the feminist theory has itself, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that's why I don't want to label my work into that point or that point mm -hmm. of the category, you know. Because in the end, I, was in, I didn't start to deal with that because I read a lot of feminism, you know, because I knew it a lot. No, I didn't. You know, I, tr I, I got to know and read after what I did. Mm -hmm. What is this to kind of define? Okay, they're defining me like this. So, okay, where does that start? And how should I now position myself? How, mm -hmm. how much I have to be clear to what is my critic? You know. Mm -hmm. So that's how I see my work. Yeah. And also to take a brand. Yeah.